Hi, I'm Susanne Matson. Welcome to this whiteboard session on what we can learn from Google about high-performing teams. You see, some years ago, Google set out to study why some of their teams were much better performing than other teams. They called this project for Project Aristotle, and you can go and look that up separately if you want to read about all the details. In this study, they looked at teams across the business, and they looked at many different kinds of parameters. What was it that made the difference to high performance? Was it the team skill levels? Was it how much money they were paid? Was it the amount of flexibility they, they received? They looked at all different kinds of parameters. And what's interesting is that they actually didn't find any big correlation between these parameters and high-performing teams. But they did find something else. The researchers at Google found that it was by observing, by looking at the teams, that they could tell which teams were high performing, because it turns out that the communication patterns and the behaviors of high performing teams are quite different to those that are not as well performing. And what they found was that in high performing teams, everybody in the team contributed and communicated in roughly equal amounts. So if you imagine that you have a team of, let's say, six people, you have probably experienced in your own career, that maybe three or four of these six people tend to do most of the contribution, most of the decision making, most of the talking. But that's one of the key differentiators. In high performing teams, everybody contributes and communicates in roughly equal amounts. And everybody communicates with everybody, not just with the leader or the manager of the, of the team. So Google then set out to investigate, OK, if in high performing teams, everybody contributes and makes decisions in roughly equal amounts, what is it that leads to that behavior? And this is where they found psychological safety as being such an important concept. And we've heard quite a bit about psychological safety in the last couple of years, and with good reason. Because it turns out that when I, as a leader, can create this psychological safety in a team, my team members are much more likely to come forward and to contribute and to tell me about their concerns and come up with their crazy ideas and contribute in brainstorming or whatever it is. But if I have the opposite behavior, if I'm a leader who believes I know all the right answers or I criticize my team members, or I'm, you know, I have some kind of behavior that diminishes them, of course, my team members are not going to come forward and really contribute. So creating psychological safety is a key aspect. Google furthermore found out that it is actually by showing vulnerability that we can begin to create the psychological safety. And it's not just Google who have found this, by the way. There's been quite a lot of research on this topic at, at, um, at the moment. How do we begin to show vulnerability and what is that all about? Because we don't really like to show vulnerability as a leader. We still want to be professional. Of course we do. However, at times to be able to say to your team, you know, I don't know the answer. I don't have all the answers. I have made mistakes too. And somehow indicating that your team doesn't have to be perfect. There is room for mistakes. That makes everybody more likely to come forward and contribute. But it's not just the leader of the team who has a responsibility for showing vulnerability. We also need the entire team to be kind of socially sensitive to each other if we are really after high performance. What this means is that the more extroverted people will make space, they will kind of... Um, calibrate themselves, be sensitive to others, and make more space so that the introverted people will feel more comfortable to step forward and to also speak. So at the end of a meeting, for instance, if only three of the six people in the team have said something, one of the team members will say, oh, Joe, you haven't said, you haven't told us about your opinion yet. What, are, what is your view? So we're socially sensitive to each other, we calibrate to each other. 
There are many other factors that matter for high performance. But these factors, emotional intelligence, creating space for each other, is definitely one of the cornerstones. Thank you for watching.